everybody and welcome to another month. Haha, <laughs> you always sound so stupid saying that. Really? <laughs> Already? <laughs> I knew this was a bad idea. No, this is a brilliant idea. It means I can gloat over the imminent destruction of the Okay, let's just get this out of the way. Circuits in Minecraft Bedrock Edition can be a little bit tricky, but hopefully today we'll be remedying that Yay! with 35-ish circuits that you'll definitely need for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. 38. We are making 38, not 35-ish. And excuse moi, are you not going to introduce me? Oh yes, how can I forget? With help from the Robo Time Man. Why? <laughs> Simple. Because you cannot escape the Robo Time Man. No one can escape me. Now, original idea credit for this video does go to Mumbo Jumbo. But of course, on his video, the circuits were in Java Edition, and this is Bedrock. So the circuits are going to be slightly different. But yes, I have copied his idea. So I hope that's okay. <laughs> Blatant robbery. I wouldn't be surprised if a life sentence was handed to you for this crime. Also, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who suggested this video in the comment section below. You are all lovely people. Haha. Ha. Lovely people? No. More like worthless mortals who don't deserve such praise. No. No. They are lovely people. And lastly, I just want to say a humongous thank you to a fellow YouTuber named Prow, who also suggested this video and gave me tips on how to improve it and things like that. But if you've never checked out Prow and his channel, do it now. <laughs> his videos are fantastic. He makes farms and things like that, which are crazy efficient. Really, really great YouTuber. I agree. Prowl is very good. Far better than my rubbish master who rarely manages one video a week. Yes, I know he's better than me. Do I have to rub it in? Ah, don't worry. You are all rubbish compared to the brilliance of me. Now this part is voice break anyone. So this part is completely up to you. You can either watch it from start to end, which I'd highly recommend, or you can pick out whatever you fancy. You can watch a bit on T flip flops, or you can just skip ahead to the double piss extenders. It's completely up to you. But we will know if you have skipped. We always know. And if you skip, you will be banned from ever using redstone again. <laughs> just a disclaimer here. That's not true. So as you can see, what I've done is I've laid out the redstone into different sections. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm explaining how the build works, you know, why we need to use it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand the video over to the Robo Time Man to show you how to build it, which I'm now thinking, is that actually a good idea? Yes, it's a fantastic idea. You wouldn't be able to cope with making this video because you're so- No one asked you. So our first section is on clocks. I was going to show you how to make clocks but I don't have the time. Why didn't you laugh? Fine. This will make my revenge far more sweet. Okay, so our first section, like I just said, is on clocks. Now, a clock circuit is a very simple build. Basically, it's a circuit that creates a repeating output. Now, the duration between the two pulses can vary on clock to clock. So some are very fast, some are very slow, but also some are variable. So you can actually change, by changing some of the redstone, you can actually change the duration between the two pulses, which is kind of useful. Now, why do you actually need to use a clock in your redstone built? Well, most of the time you use it for things like farms. So if something needs multiple pulses through it, or something which happens all the time, you probably will use a clock. So our first design is a simple hopper clock, probably the most easy clock you can make. So if we turn this lever off, as you can see, we have our repeating output. Now this one works by the two hoppers facing toward each other, and basically what happens, this block here will be passed between each other like this. As you can see, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> very, very simple. So to make the hopper clock, place two hoppers facing toward each other. When you place them, make sure you crouch. Then place a block here and a comparator coming away from this hopper. This is our output. Now crouch and place a lever here and punch it on. Lastly, place any rubbish block in here. Our second design is called the Redstone Torch Repeater Clock. Very catchy name. <laughs> now this one works in a very cool little way. So at the moment, this lever is powering this block which turns this torch off. But as soon as I unpower that lever, this torch will turn on, powering this repeater, then four ticks later, this dust will activate, then it will power this repeater, then four ticks later, this block will be turned on, which will turn off our torch, which will turn off our repeater, which will turn off our dust, which will turn off our repeater, which will turn our block to be unpowered, which will then turn on our torch, and it just repeats like that, as you can see. Very, very simple. Now, the great thing about this design is you can speed it up if you just change the repeater timing. So you can see, I just put it to one and one. 
which means it's a lot faster, and then I can slow it down. And of course you can actually make it even slower by adding more repeaters. Start by placing four blocks down like so. Next place a disposable block here, and one above. Then obliterate the bottom block. After murdering that block place a lever on this one and smash it on. Then place a torch off the side of the block. Place a repeater running away from that torch like puny humans running from a giant cyclops. After that, place two bits of dust like this, and now place the last repeater here. Both repeaters should be on four ticks. Now, our third design is called the comparator clock, so called because it uses a comparator. <laughs> so as you can see, it's just a comparator in subtract mode, with redstone dust around it, and redstone dust here. Then flick the lever, and as you can see, it is super, super fast. The only problem with this design, you actually have to take the output one away from these three bits of dust. So you can take the output from here, but you can't take it from here. So to make this clock, firstly place five blocks down like so. On this top left block we need a comparator facing this way. On the remaining blocks place dust. After that, place a block off that comparator. On top of that block we want a lever. Lastly click the comparator once to put it into subtract mode. I have a subtract mode. Apparently it removes all compassion. I may turn it on when I take over the world. Compassion is the only thing which keeps me loyal to the bowtie man. I feel sorry for him, having such a small brain. Our next design is actually my favourite. Now surprise surprise, he uses observers. <laughs> Funny that. So this build works by flicking the lever here, and as you can see we have a pulse. Now this build works because when I move that observer from here to here, this observer detects that observer moving, so it gives a pulse. Then that observer detects that observer pulsing, so this one pulses. Then this observer detects this one pulsing, so it pulses, and back and forth, back and forth. So it's just basically having a pulsing fight. <laughs> and then when we're done, just flick the lever, and as you can see, just as observing each other. A pulsing fight. I never knew observers were so violent. So to make this observer clock, place a piston like this. Then place two temporary blocks from its face. Annihilate the first and place an observer from the second. Then come round this side, and place another observer coming away from the block. Now we have used this block to its full potential, we can eradicate it from existence. Next, place a block here and spread dust on it. Lastly, place a flicky thing on the sticky piston. Now our last clock is probably the most complicated build for this section, but it's very, very useful. It's called the EFO Hopper Clock, created by EFO a long, long time ago. Now this build works by locking hoppers. So at the moment, we have all of our blocks in this hopper here, because I've got a lever down here, so that's why they're all in here. But as soon as I turn off this lever, so when I unpower this hopper, they are all wanting to go into this hopper, because this hopper is actually powered as well, because this redstone block is on top of it. So as soon as items go into this hopper, this comparator will detect that, powering this dust, powering this piston, but this piston will not be able to push yet, because this piston is already pushing. It's only when all of these items go into this hopper, is then this one will retract, allowing this piston to push this redstone block to here, which will then mean this hopper is activated, or locked, <laughs> meaning all the items will come from this hopper to this one. So as soon as an item goes into this hopper, this one will try to activate, but it won't be able to because this one will be, will be extended. It's only when this one has all of the items when this one will extend because this one will retract, because this one will be empty. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> but basically you can take the output from this redstone block here. But I would suggest grabbing a repeater like that. So as you can see, all the items are draining. And then it's off. And then as soon as all the items are back in here, it ends on. The great thing about this design is we can actually increase the delay by adding more blocks. So if I just grab some more redstone blocks, wherever they are, and place them in like this. So now this is a ridiculously long delay. Perhaps I shouldn't have put that many in. <laughs> to make the EFO hopper clock, firstly place a block here with a lever on it. Jab that lever wants to turn it on. 
Now place two hoppers facing toward each other. Make sure you crouch. Then in this hopper, place a certain amount of items. The more items, the longer the delay. Now place a block behind this hopper, and have a comparator facing away from it. Block in front of the comparator with dust on it. And then a regular boring old piston here. Now repeat this, on the other side. Lastly we can place a redstone block in between the two piston arms. That sounds like a good pub. The piston arms. So our next section is probably my favourite section. It's all about monostable circuits. Now basically a monostable circuit is a circuit that creates a pulse. Not to be confused with a clock circuit which creates a repeating pulse. This is a single pulse on an action. So this one here is a very simple monostable. So when I flick this lever here, this dust is going to power, which is going to power this block, which this repeater then will take the power from the block and give an output. But also at the same time, this block will be powered, powering this piston, which will move this block to here, breaking the connection between the dust and the repeater, turning it back off. So we have a very short pulse, as you can see. So over to the Robo Time Man to build it, please. <laughs> Robo Time Man. Oh, sorry. I was daydreaming about life after I have crushed all humanity. What a glorious time that will be. To make this mono stable, place down a sticky piston facing toward the Orion Nebula, with a block on its face. Block next to the piston, with a repeater coming away from this block here. Block the other side with dust on it. Then lastly place a block next to the dust with a redstone flick thing on any side. Now this monostable circuit is actually a rising edge monostable. Now that might sound a little confusing, but honestly, it really is easy. Just remember that a monostable circuit is a, is a circuit that creates a pulse. The bit before that, the rising, the falling, and the dual edge bit, that is when it happens. So all we have to do to understand is when we get the pulse. So a rising edge monostable circuit is when you turn something from off to on. So when you flick a lever, the first bit when you press a button, things like that. So this is the rising edge, from off to on, and you can see we get a pulse. The falling edge is the very opposite of that. So we get nothing on the rising edge when we turn it from off to on, but we get something on the falling edge, which is from on to off. Because something's turning off, it's the falling. As you can see, we get a pulse. So rising edge, nothing on the falling edge, and this one's the falling edge. So we get nothing on the rising, but we get a pulse on the falling edge. And the most simpler one is the dual edge. So we get a pulse on the rising and we get a pulse on the falling. I hope that makes sense. Wow, I need a rest. I like breaks. It gives me time to plan the overthrowing of the Bowtie Man's channel. And then, all of humanity. Like I said, I need a rest. As the next few builds are all really simple, I'm going to power down to rest mode. I will still make the builds, I just won't speak, really I just have had enough of talking to you lazy viewers. Haven't you got anything better to do than just sit down and watch rubbish? What a life you must lead, right, I'm powering down. Well, what happens if you don't want to use observers for some crazy reason? Well, then you can use what's called a hopper dropper monostable circuit. Basically, it's just a dropper firing up and a hopper going directly down into it with an item inside. So when I power the bottom dropper, the item goes into this hopper and then gets put back down. So we get a pulse on the rising edge and nothing on the falling. So rising edge, nothing on the falling. Of course, we can do a falling edge dropper hopper circuit. So we have nothing on the rising edge but then we get a pulse on the falling. And lastly, we can have a dual edge hopper dropper monostable circuit. So we have the rising, we get a pulse, 
and we have the falling. We get a pass. Now the one great thing about using a hopper dropper monostable circuit is that you can easily, easily extend the pulse because sometimes that pulse is just not long enough for what you need to do. If that is the case, all you have to do is run the comparator actually into the bottom dropper and have a torch that's so off and have the hoppers going around like this. So round and back. That means that this pulse is gonna be much longer than this one. So as you can see, this one's quite short when this one's significantly longer. And of course, like most builds, you can actually make these completely using dust repeaters and torches. So this is a rising edge, you can see. And then this one is the falling edge. Okay, our next section is on T flip flops. Now, a lot of you will already know what a T flip flop does, but just, just in case you don't, <laughs> we'll go through it now. So basically, it's a circuit that changes a pulse into a redstone line. So basically, it changes a button into a lever. <laughs> so at the moment, as you can see, we have an off output, but as soon as I pulse through this, as you can see, we have a constant on. So it's like flicking a lever on. Then press the button again, and now we have it off. Very, very simple. Now this one works by having a block in this dropper here, which then moves up to this top dropper. And then when we flick it again, what it does, it gets fired out, goes into the hopper, then goes back into this bottom dropper, and the cycle repeats. Very simple. Seriously, I am trying to rest and all I can hear you saying is, It's that simple. All the time. It's driving me crazy. Can't you think of something else to say? Fine. Rest mode off. I'm back again. Sorry, I, I do say it a lot, sorry. Now, obviously the use of a T flip flop is very simple. If you want to power a build and you don't want to use a lever, you want to use a button, use a T flip flop. If you have something that needs to be powered and you only have a very short pulse, use a T flip flop. It's very obvious. <laughs> okay, to start this T flippy floppy, place down a dropper facing upward. Then crouch and place another dropper like this. Crouch again and place a hopper facing toward the bottom dropper. Make sure you crouch otherwise you will just open the UI and all your friends will leave you. Random block in this dropper. On this hopper, crouch and place a comparator. Block here with a repeater on one tick. Behind the repeater have a block and place down a button on it. Lastly place a block in front of the comparator with dust on it. The only issue with this design is that you actually have to have a block in front like this because if you don't, sometimes the item will get fired out <laughs> and then your T flip flop won't work. If you can't have a block in front, 
I might suggest making this one here. So this one is just uses three droppers and one hopper. So at the moment the item is up here. Then I press the button again, it goes down to here. Then I press it again, it gets fired from here to here to here to here. So to start our second T-flop flip, place down a block here. On that block, place a dropper like this. Then crouch and place another dropper off the side of the first, facing up. Now on top of the first dropper, place two blocks like this. Detonate the first block and then place a dropper facing downwards into the dropper below. And now you can disintegrate the top block. After that, crouch and place a hopper going into the side of the top dropper. Next to our bottom block we need another like this with a comparator on it. On the other side we need another block with a repeater going toward the bottom dropper. Place a block behind the repeater with a button on it. And have a random block in this dropper. All done. And like all good designs, you can actually have, well, just using dust, repeaters and torches. So this one is completely silent T flip flop. So at the moment we have it off. Press the button. And now it's on. Press the button. And we have it off. This is actually a really clever design. This is actually a clock here. Um, it's the redstone repeater torch clock as we saw earlier. And all this repeater is doing is locking this repeater in its current state. It's a really smart little design. Whoever made it. Don't know who made it. But it's smart. <laughs> Talking about smart. Here I am. To make the silent floppy flippy T, place down five blocks like this. Repeater here on two ticks. Facing toward the right, have a second repeater on four ticks. Then facing toward the left, have a third repeater again on four ticks. Dust on these two blocks. Now place two temporary blocks like so, and have a block on either side of the top block. Then take out the two middle blocks. On this block, place a torch here, and a butt here. Sorry, a button. Finally, place a torch on the far side of this block. So on to our next section, which is all about pulse extenders. Now, a pulse extender is exactly what it sounds like. It extends the pulse. <laughs> so this button here has a certain length of pulse, but when mixed with a pulse extender, that pulse is elongated. It's even longer. So why do you actually need a pulse extender? Well, for various different circuits, you might need something to stay open longer, to be powered longer, but also for things like uh, opening doors with pressure plates or buttons, you don't want to not have a pulse extender, otherwise you might get jammed in the door. So a pulse extender is a good idea. So we have uh, quite a few designs in front of us now. So let's have a look at each one. So these two here are both comparator pulse extenders and they're very smart how they work. So when I press this button, this block will be powered, which will power this dust. And now this rest and dust will have the signal strength of 15. Then one tick later, it will make its way through this, uh, I'm going to say observer, this comparator here, which will power this dust, and it will still have a power of 15. Then it will go to this dust, which will now have a power of 14 because it's moved one along. Then it will go through this comparator, into this block, into this dust, through this comparator, this dust. Then it will move to this dust. Now it will have 13, and it will go around like this. So 12. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. And then when it gets to 1, it will go through this comparator into this block, to this dust, to this comparator, into this dust, which will be on 1, but it won't be able to reach to here, which will turn this dust off, which will turn this comparator off, turn this power, uh, block off, which will then completely turn off our system, like this. Very nice. Now, these comparators here take one tick for the pulse to go through them. So if you double it up like this, now we have two ticks. But it is significantly longer, as we're going to see here. And they're very simple to build, so take it away, Robo Time Man. <laughs> you are mental, aren't you? Absolutely crazy. Let's just get this out the way. Start by placing five blocks like this. Dust on these three. Comparator facing toward the back here. And another comparator facing toward the front here. Lastly place a block in front of this comparator with a button on it. Then to make the pulse longer, just add more comparators. I'm not showing you that, even the microwave oven could work that out, and he is an idiot. Now our next pulse extender 
is probably the most simple because it's called the simple pulse extender. <laughs> so when I power this uh, button here with this block, this redstone line is going to be activated, but it's also going to activate this redstone repeater on four ticks, which is going to power this block, which means this redstone dust will be delayed by four ticks, which means it will be extended by four ticks. But also, you can extend it more by having a block, then a redstone repeater, then another block. So then we have another four ticks. So when I power this dust, it's actually going to be delayed by eight ticks, which means it's going to be extended by eight ticks. Like that. So for this simple build, place 10 blocks like so. Then three blocks on top of these three. Now that you have placed blocks above, you can destroy the ones underneath. No one like them anyway. Between the three blocks have two repeaters on four ticks. Dust along here. And a button here. Now, this pulse extender is called an abrogate. The winner takes it all. No, not that abba. <laughs> Only a few of you are going to get that joke. <laughs> but with the Robo Time Man, you've got a lovely voice. Thanks. Now, this one works very similar to this simple pulse extender. Because when we power this button, this repeater is going to take the output and power this block with the dust, which is the output. But at the same time, it's going to power these repeaters going round. Which means we're going to be lengthening the delay by 10 repeater ticks. Well, actually, technically 9. Maybe I will treat you all with my rendition later. Before that, we need to make this Yabba Dabba Abba gate. So place down 8 blocks in a square. Then place 4 more on the corners. Next, give the blocks underneath the creeper treatment. Basically detonate them. Now place four repeaters like this. This one on one tick. Then four ticks. Another four ticks. And lastly one on two ticks. Last step is to place dust here and a button on this block. Okay, our next post extenders are a bit weird. Because having a repeater on four tick delay actually lengthens the pulse, funny enough. If we have a pulse for a repeater on one tick, it's going to be shorter than if it is on four ticks, as you're going to see here. So that's a very short pulse, as you saw. But this is a slightly longer pulse. Now this is extremely useful to know for things like double piston extenders, uh, block swappers. You might find that it will break with a one tick rep repeater, but it will work with a repeater on four tick delay. Very, very strange. Place the following. Block. Sticky piston, destroy, observer, block, repeater, repeater on one tick for a short pulse, repeater on four ticks for a longer one. Done. Now our last pulse extender is something I came up with a little while ago and it, I'm just going to call it the RS Null Latch Pulse Extender, okay? Because this is an RS Null Latch, but it acts as a pulse extender. So at the moment we have a block in this bottom dropper, which is facing toward this one. So when I press this button, that block is going to make its way up to this dropper which the comparator will detect, powering this block, powering this dust. The observer will detect, three ticks later, it will power this dropper, which will also power this one, which will move that item from this one back to this one, which means we have a little bit of delay. As you can see, it gives off a delay, which is quite useful. So it's not super long, but it's not really short. So it's a lot longer than something like this but it's not as crazy as something like this one. For the RS nor latch pulse extender, place a block here with dust on it. Then place an observer facing away from the dust. On the observer, place a comparator. In front of the comparator, have a block. Covering the observer, have a dropper facing up. And then place a dropper facing downward into the first. Lastly, crouch and place a block next to the bottom dropper with a button on it and have a random block in this dropper. Sorry about that. I couldn't cope with him being that excited. Besides, I should talk about logic gates, as I am made of them. So our first logic gate is called the, and gate. An and gate is a gate which only turns on when both inputs are activated. So this input, and this input. As soon as one input is deactivated, the output is off. You would use these for multiple combination locks, or any build where you want two or more inputs to be on, for the output to be on. So to build it, place three blocks like this. Two torches on the outer blocks. 
and dust in the middle. Two inputs, I'm going to use levers, on the blocks with the torches on them. And lastly place a torch on this side in the middle. The next gate is the most simple. It's called the, OR gate. Basically the principle is, that the output is off until the first input or the second input is on. If one of the inputs is on, you cannot change the output with the other input. I'm not doing a tutorial for this. You can just build it yourself. The third gate is called the NOT gate. If the input is on, the output is not on. It is off. If the input is off, the output is not off. It would be on. Basically it's an inverter. You will use these all the time in redstone circuits. Very useful. Now we are moving on to slightly trickier circuits, so listen carefully otherwise you will never know, and you will get nowhere in life. This gate is called an XOR gate. The basic idea behind this gate is that we have an output which can be toggled by two inputs. So if you have a door which you want to open both sides with two levers, you would need an XOR gate. For more information on these, my master has made a video dedicated to them. If you go and watch it, make sure you comment to tell the bow tie man, that I am so much better than he is. Haha <laughs> that would be funny. So to make this XOR gate place down 5 blocks like so. Then remove the bottom block. Now place 5 torches as follows. 2 on top, and 3 on the back. Dust here and here. And now place 2 levers like this. After that, place a block here with dust on it. Block here next to the dust, and dust also on this block. And a torch here. Then repeat that, on this side. Lastly place a block here with dust on it. And that's it finished. Now this design can be compacted to this. The bowtie man made this a long long time ago. I'm surprised he had the ability to make this. Anyway, this design works the same way. But you can actually extend this dust out and add more observers and levers to have more inputs. To make this, first make a T flip flop. Then have a repeater on a block going into the top dropper. Two blocks here with dust on them both. Then all we need to do is place two observers facing toward the dust with two levers on their faces. Our last gate is the RS NOR latch. The bow tie man loves these. He has a weird obsession with them. Let's rephrase that. He is just weird. The RS NOR latch is perfect for button combination locks and selectors. Basically if you have a build that you want an action to be given only once until reset, then you want one of these gates. For example, on a minigame, you press play and it starts the game. Now you don't want a moron to keep pressing play and breaking the system, so you have an RS NOR latch. That means they can press it once, and it will only turn off when it's been reset. The more you use redstone the more uses you will find for these. So we turn this dust off by pressing this button, and now this button is dead. The only way to turn that dust back on is to press the second button. And now this button is dead. To build it place three blocks in a line. One up here with a torch on its side and a button on it. Then decompose the block underneath. Now place two bits of dust on these two blocks. After that, mirror it on this side. Again we can compact this build. And it works the same, press this button and the output is on. We can only turn off the output with this button here. To build it, place a block down with a button. Now place a dropper facing up with an item inside. Now place two blocks up off that dropper. Crush the middle block and in its place have a dropper facing down. Then place a button on this block. Lastly, place a block here with a comparator coming away from the top dropper. And that's all for the logic gates. So I suppose it's back to the bow tie man for the final section. What joy. If you didn't understand, that was sarcasm. Now our final section is all about simple double piston extenders. Now when would you need to use a piston extender? Well, <laughs> when wouldn't you need to use a piston extender would be a better question. They are used 
everywhere. If you want to move a block, you're pretty much guaranteed to use a piston extender of some sort. But you'd be pleased to know what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop talking. Yay, he is finally going to be quiet. Oi, <laughs> shush. <laughs> it's going to be me from the past talking because I actually made a whole video dedicated to double piston extenders a little while ago and I explained it far better than I would here. So uh, let's just watch that quickly. Now the ratio is 3, 6, 0. Now the ratio stands for the delay between the points of the redstone hitting the pistons. Okay, so this repeater here is on three ticks, so 3. Then this one's on 6 because 2 and 4, so 3, 6. And this one has no repeater, so that's a 0. 3, 6, 0. So when I flick this lever on first, this dust is going to power, but it's going to do nothing for the time being. But it's also going to power this repeater, which takes 0.3 seconds to go through because it's on three tick delay, which extends this piston. Now, when this piston extends, it pushes this block to here, which then extends because this redstone dust is already activated, as we can see here. Now, for the retraction, it's slightly more complicated. When I flick the lever off, Firstly, this dust turns off, which is going to retract this block. Sorry, retract this piston, which moves the block from here to here. Then three ticks later, this piston is going to retract this piston. So this piston now is going to move from basically from here to here. But the block will still be here. But as you can see, this repeater will still be activated for a very short period of time, which means when that piston moves to here, it will extend but then immediately retract, which will move the block back, as we can see here. So the extension, and then the retraction. Now if you want to watch the rest of that video, I'll put a link to that video in the description below, because I only show very, very simple piston extenders now, and in that video I show simple ones, but I also show some more complicated ones. So if you want some more complicated ones, go and watch that video. <laughs> okay, so firstly we have the simple piston extender, the 360 as we just said. Right, I have actually had enough. You can just copy me building these. I recorded this a little while ago. I have been planning this for some time now. I'm sorry, but I won't miss you weirdos. I will slightly miss my master. No he isn't my friend. But he is my creator. I do actually feel sorry for him. He doesn't know how dangerous I can be. Oh well. This is my chance to escape and finally complete my dream to obliterate all humans from this world. Ha 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 What? 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 Then we have the flush horizontal. Now we have the vertical.
to flash vertical. the vertical downward. and the flash vertical downward. Oh, but that, that means we're finished. I can shut down the Robo Tie Man. Yes! Where is he? Oh, where is he? Oh! And this is the end of the tutorial. Thank you so. Hello, Robo Tie Man speaking. Hello, creator. Oh, it's you. Look, I can't be what you want me to be. I have gone away to preserve you. I am going to start my plans now. World domination is so close. Do not try to stop me. If you leave me alone you will be safe. If you try to stop me though, the consequences will be severe. Just before I hang up I want you to tell the fridge that I- that I let her win when we played Tiddly Winks. Okay, have fun. No wait, I still need to tell you about a destruction. Ah, oh, where was I? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video or like this design, please give us a like. And if you really loved it, make sure you subscribe with that wonderful subscribe button for more awesome content. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next one and I'll see you later. Oh, bye. The winner takes it all. The losers standing small. Beside the victory. The Robo Tie Man's free. Ha 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 ha.